This video is an introduction to biological energy. Did you know that a living cell is a miniature chemical factory where thousands of reactions occur? Many of these reactions often require energy. Cells get energy by taking in nutrients and molecules and breaking them down. What do you think they do with that energy? A lot of things. They might transport things in and out of the cell, for example. They might build new molecules, process old molecules to function better, respond to the environment, or maybe move toward food. The life of a cell is quite busy with all the chemical reactions that must take place for the cell to survive and function. Some cells use energy for neat things, like fluorescing at night. You might be wondering why these mushrooms would want to glow. Me too. Weird, right? Well, it might be to deter some animals from eating it. It could also help attract bugs that come check it out and in the meantime pick up some of their spores and help disperse them so they can grow new fungus. So we're talking about energy and chemical reactions today, so it's important to know the term metabolism. Metabolism is the totality of an organism's chemical reactions. Yep, all of them. I know you normally think about metabolism when you think of exercise and diet, but in reality, our body and the cells inside it are undergoing thousands of reactions each minute, whether we're awake or asleep. Later in the semester, you'll hear more about nutrition and exercise, but for now, let's just think about metabolism at the cellular level, all the reactions happening in just one cell. So you should know by now that a chemical reaction begins with specific molecules called reactants and ends with distinct molecules called products. So that's one chemical reaction, but again, metabolism is all the chemical reactions going on. So we organize these chemical reactions into things called pathways. A metabolic pathway is a set of chemical reactions. Each step of this pathway is catalyzed or made to go more quickly with the help of a specific enzyme. There are two kinds of metabolic pathways. First, we have what are called catabolic pathways, which release energy by breaking down complex molecules into simpler molecules. A real-life example of this is cellular respiration. We eat things like sugars and breathe in oxygen, so those are the reactants. And with the help of enzymes, we break down that sugar and make products, including carbon dioxide, water, and we release energy. On the flip side, there are anabolic pathways, which consume energy to build complex molecules from simpler ones. Again, a real-life example of this is the way that we might take two amino acids and put them together to make a polypeptide chain. We're building something more complex from simpler molecules. So you might be wondering, how am I going to remember these pathways? Don't panic, I have a memory trick. So, do cats normally build things, or do they take things and tear them up into little itty bitty pieces? Mm -hmm. Yep, cats tear things apart into little itty bitty pieces. So that's how I remember that catabolism is how we break things down into smaller pieces. On the flip side, you might remember Marion Jones from all those gold medals she won in the 2000 Olympics, who just a couple years ago admitted taking anabolic steroids to help her build strength and speed. Anabolism is building things, like building muscle. So anyway, those are my mnemonic devices to help me remember the difference between catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions. So we've talked about how chemical reactions either use energy or release energy. But what is energy? Energy is the capacity to cause change, and it exists in various forms. So one form of energy is called kinetic energy, and that's the energy that's associated with motion, like running or hiking or swimming. Any kind of using your muscles or motion is really kinetic energy. There's a special kind of kinetic energy called heat energy or thermal energy, and that's associated with random movement of atoms and molecules. But heat energy technically is a kind of kinetic energy. There's also potential energy, and potential energy is energy that matter possesses because of its location or structure. This can be a little abstract, but think about a stretched out rubber band that you're kind of holding in this stretched out position. 
That rubber band has a lot of potential energy. If you release it, it's going to fly through the air and hopefully not hit anybody in the eye. So while you have it stretched out, it's holding all that potential energy. And when you release it, that potential energy converts into kinetic energy as it flies through the room. There's another form of potential energy that we'll talk a lot about in class called chemical energy. And that's a kind of potential energy that's available for release in a chemical reaction. Chemical energy can be stored in chemical bonds. So when you break those bonds, the energy gets released. So chemical bonds have potential energy. So one thing that's important to know is that energy can be converted from one form to another, just like the rubber band example. But let me give you a couple of other examples. So this is a picture of a dam, and here you can see the dam. I kind of illuminated it in yellow. And this dam is blocking up a bunch of water. So this is just like the Hoover Dam that's close to Nevada State College. Here you can see how the potential energy of stored water is converted into kinetic energy as water travels down to the lower height. And that moving water turns a turbine and actually converts that kinetic energy into electricity. This is how all of us get energy from the Hoover Dam. Here's another example of how energy can convert to different forms. This woman has a lot of potential energy standing on top of the hill. And as she whoopee dives, the diver's energy is converted from potential energy into kinetic energy. Now she's moving. At the bottom, in the water, she has less potential energy than she did originally. She lost some of her energy as she dove through the air and that energy was converted into kinetic energy. But as she walks back up the hill, the kinetic energy of her muscle movement can be stored as more potential energy. So as she goes back up the hill, once she's back at the top, she has a lot of potential energy again. That's the end of our story about energy for today, but I want to make sure you understood it, so let's do a quick review. Imagine you pull a can of soup down from the top shelf to examine it. The can at eye level has more or less potential energy than it did on the top shelf. All right, well, it has less energy than it did on the top shelf we converted some of that potential energy into kinetic energy as we brought the can down. Here's another question. You eat a hamburger and your cells break down the proteins of the burger into amino acids and break down the starch from the bun into more simple sugars. Is that an example of a catabolic reaction or an anabolic reaction? Think about it. Hopefully my mnemonic device did you some help that's a catabolic reaction. Okay, so hopefully you understood everything we talked about today in terms of biological energy. Good luck in class this week.